Okay, God bless each one of you. Um, first of all, I'm going to tell you that I'm no better than any of you. And uh, I make just as many mistakes as everybody else. I need the Word of God and I need the Lord Jesus to help me daily because I make mistakes also. Um, a lot of times I walk right into a mess and I'm amazed that the Lord still wants to even use me. Sometimes my tongue gets the best of me. I'm not saying this to brag about it. I'm saying this to just let you know that the Word of God's here to correct all of us. It's here to help us. It's here to instruct us. We're living in the last days. Um, since I was a little boy, I, I don't think there's anything that's been on my heart or on my mind which I didn't always share it because I just felt like you know I'm Lord I make mistakes like everybody else I, I don't need to be the one sharing this and and the Lord pretty much come to me and let me know that do you love me I said, well yeah Lord I love you I said well then if you love me then you follow my commandments and I was like well Lord that's the problem I don't always follow your commandments therefore I don't think I should be the one sharing the Lord Jesus asked me again, do you love me? I said, yes, Lord, I love you. But like I said, I mean, if I loved you, I'd follow your commandments. And I I don't feel like I do the way I should do. And, and he said, then go feed my sheep. And I thought, Lord, how in the world are you going to use a man like me? I'm, he said, just, just go feed my sheep. When I show you something, just go show them. Let me take care of the rest. I said, well, Lord, okay, so little by little, that's what I've been doing. And for the Lord, I feel like the Holy Spirit uses the Lord Jesus to teach me or show me something. I try my best to share it forward because it's my responsibility to, to share. It's my responsibility to share the truth, whether it may be that I'm the one that needs to hear the truth. But so this the last night, I was uh, pretty tired, didn't feel myself. Didn't feel health wise very good. But I was sitting downstairs and these verses came to mind while I was listening to another man preaching about the millennium coming. And then all of a sudden these verses started coming to mind and started reminding me that, you know, there's there's a lot of people that they want to understand a little more about this rapture. They want to understand about the mindset that Christians have right now. They just want to learn a little bit more about Jesus. You know, that's really what it is when we read the Bible. We're really supposed to be wanting to learn more about Jesus so that we can do what's right, so that we can gain faith in this Lord and Savior that we have that wants to help us to gain a little more understanding about this man, Jesus Christ, Son of God, that died on the cross for us, that gave his life for us, What's his purpose? What What is it that he's after? You know, what it, what is it that he's trying to do? Well, we're going to study a little bit today, and we're going to understand just a little bit more, I believe, thanks to the Lord Jesus, about this time of the rapture, about how the people are going to act. Because I'll be honest with you, that I, I've never seen a time which, I, as a little boy, and I kind of always wondered, you know, you heard all the preachers talking about it, that uh what what's it gonna be like i'm like lord you know what's what's the attitude of the people going to be because we don't know the day we don't need to know the time but how can i be ready so there are places in the word of god that god showed me last night that we can look and we can see how the attitude of of us as christians needs to change but also how to be aware of the ones around us and what's going to happen Okay, so we're going to praise the Lord Jesus. We're going to thank him for what he's given for us and done for us. And uh, we're just going to sit here and we're just going to read through these verses and we're going to study a little bit about the attitude of the people around us, the, the preparation that we need to have as Christians as far as the rapture coming and as far as um, revelation. That, that word rapture is really hapazo, which means a snatching or taking away. The time's going to come that Jesus is going to come back to the clouds. Uh, a lot of people don't don't see that, but just been blessed, I guess, to see that 
there's actually two more comings from Jesus. Um, one of them, he's going to be coming to the clouds, and not everybody's going to see him. Uh, when he comes to the clouds to gather his church, not everybody's going to see him. Uh, there's only going to be the Christians that are taken up to heaven are going to see him. And raised from the, those that are raised from the dead and those Christians that are alive. The rest of the world isn't going to see him. Uh, they're just all of a sudden going to be in awe of how many people are missing and all the things going on in the world. Then there's another coming that's coming after the Great Tribulation. And that's when the Lord Jesus is going to come back and he's going to come like a, um, a bright shining star because it's going to get real dark during those times of great tribulation. It's going to get real dark and then you're going to see that sign. It comes from the east. He's going to be just like the sun raising. You're going to all of a sudden see brighter and brighter until you see the Lord of Lord and King of Kings, our Lord Jesus Christ with his bride, all of them on white horses are going to land on Mount Olives. And then uh, his kingdom from that day forth is going to start uh, because he's going to set things right in this world the way they're supposed to be. So there's two more comings from Jesus. And the one that we're looking forward to as Christians that, you know, I'm kind of torn, kind of like Paul said, I really want for the rapture to come and to take his church away because I hopefully and I have faith that, that I'll get to go as well. But at the same time, it's going to be a sad time of uh, tribulations going to come on this world. It's going to be a lot of challenges that are going to happen. A lot of things that are, people are going to die. People are going to, the countries are going to be lost. Um, animals are going to be devastated. There's just so much things that's going to happen in this world that um, we just, we really don't understand everything that's going to be. But we thank the Lord Jesus that he didn't just do things just to do them. We're thankful that we have his father, that he says he doesn't do anything without showing his prophets first. Uh, God always tells us what he's going to do before what he's going to do it so that he can get the glory for it, so that man can't take the glory for what God's already foretold is going to happen. We're going to read through, though. Uh, this is just what God showed me. We're going to read through a little bit about... Um, what God showed me, and this is to prepare a person for this rapture, prepare a person for that any moment this could happen, okay? We're going to go to uh book of Genesis. We're going to go to the book of Genesis. We're going to go to chapter 19. We're going to start in verse 12. Now, my encouragement is that you read... Uh, this is Genesis chapter 18 and 19. Read them in full. We're not going to cover the whole thing, but this is basically Sodom and Gomorrah. This is, uh, you're going to see the similarities, though, of how this happens, okay? Uh, we're going to start in verse 12. Um, so, first of all, Let's step back just for a second, and we're going to read verse 1, okay? Genesis 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. There's, there's a lot more to this right here than we realize, okay? There's two angels. There's two angels that are coming here to say what's happening. There's two witnesses uh, standing also that, that came during the Great Tribulation to warn men of what was going on. There's two angels that appeared um, with with Jesus, or two, two messengers that were at the right and left hand of Jesus when he was in the Mount Transfiguration. You're going to see throughout the Bible that that two witnesses has a lot to do with it. Why? Because God doesn't do things in secret. God openly does things the way he's doing. He didn't just send one man to go tell a story. He sent two. Okay. He sent two of them to be able to tell that, hey, this is what's going on. But I want you to see where Lot is at the time. Lot's at the gate of the city. At the gate of the city is where all the important people sat. 
in our day and time, they wouldn't be sitting at the gate of the city. In our day and time, they would be sitting in the courthouse in their big chairs, okay? That's where a lot of times people are, and you have to remember what Sodom was known for. I mean, the name itself, if you look it up, it isn't a very nice name. So, uh, they, they were known for their sinful acts. They were known for their sinful lifestyle. So, Lot he gotten himself accepted into this town because he really liked the wealth of it. He really liked the things that were going on. So later on, we would never imagine this, but later on in the New Testament, we find out from one of the writers that Lot was actually a righteous preacher. So this righteous preacher who uh, was actually nephew to Abraham, he, uh, he chose to go closer to this city. And in doing so, he actually condemns his family and doesn't realize that we're going to read through a little bit of that here in a minute. Because he chooses to do the things of the world, because he chooses to accept. He, he not only accepts and wants to be included, but he raises up in rank in this city to where he allows himself to be taken in and to be part of the group, pretty much. That's why he's sitting at the gates of the city. That's where all the important people were. So in this times that we're in, you're going to see a lot of the preachers, a lot of the people that uh, closer we get to this rapture time, you're going to see this. Closer to the destruction, which that's basically what this is leading to, is the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. That's why these two angels have come. They haven't come to say that everything's going to be okay. They've come to give them news that, hey, this town's going to be destroyed. And where's this righteous preacher at? He's right in the middle of it. In our day and time that we're living right now, this is exactly what's going to happen. You're going to see preachers. You're going to see famous people that are big speakers. They're going to be right in the middle of all the sinfulness that's supposed to be. Um, a lot of times, this is once again, this is one of the reasons why a lot of times I feel like, you know, the Lord, I make a lot of mistakes too. I say things I shouldn't. I question some of the decisions that I make, you know, and then God has to come to me and tell me, well, if you thought they was right, wrong, then you need to repent. You need to get away from those things. And it's a challenge for us to stand for the truth and yet realize that, you know, because of me standing for the truth, I may not be able to be in these high places. It's a decision that we have to make. Um, let's go on to uh, verse 12 now. we we'll keep going. It says, And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. This is the angels telling them, you need to get out of here. And anybody that you know, anybody, anybody around you, that's something you need to ask yourselves as a Christian. You know that the destruction's coming. You know that this great tribulation's coming. What have you done about it? Have you told your family, brother-in-law, son-in-laws, family, kids, children, you know, there's points in my life that I've had to accept the fact that I have told family. Some family don't want anything to do with me because I've told them. I'm not exactly the favorite friend amongst a lot of people, in, you know, in the town where I live. Why? Because I talk about Jesus and I talk about things the way they're going to be. It doesn't exactly make you popular to do that. You're going to see, look, look right here what happens to him. In verse 13, look what it says. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent unto us to destroy it. You got to remember that in the town of Sodom, there were children that were being mistreated. There were older people that were being mistreated. They were literally, their sinful lifestyle had took over so bad that it was coming up before God. The cries of people, murders were happening whenever they wanted to. Uh, People were getting away with anything they were doing. People were, the, the, the sinful lifestyle was so horrible that people were doing whatever they wanted to do whenever they wanted to do it. And then there were men that were still considering themselves leaders of this town, that they were okay with everything that was going on. And we saw right there who was one of them that was sitting at the town who was okay with it, which was Lot. He was okay with everything that was going on. And these angels have come to him and tell him, look, we didn't come here to say everything's okay. We come here to destroy it. We come here because this is what God says to do. The Lord has sent us. 
So then what did Lot do? Verse 14, And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up and get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. That right there is what happens, didn't it? When we go around and we make light of sin, we make light of things going on around us. When we do stand up for the truth, who's going to believe us? That's one of the challenges that I had several years ago is that, Lord, why are they going to listen to me share the truth about you when I can't control the words that are coming out of my mouth, when I'm cussing worse than they are? That doesn't seem right, Lord. It doesn't seem like that's what I'm supposed to do. And yet the Lord kept showing me, I've washed you, I've cleaned you, I've prepared you. You're going to have to face some of these things. You're going to have to face that, yes, that a lot of them, this is going to be part of your life now. You're going to have to accept the fact that you've made those mistakes and you're going to have to work past it. So little by little, the Lord developed a testimony in me that not that people would need to follow me, but that people would see that the Lord had done something different. Maybe you're in that first part of that. Maybe you're midway through that. Maybe you can stand back and say, yes, I can see where the Lord brought me from, and I thank the Lord for it. It wasn't from my strength. In these last days, we're going to have to accept the fact that, hey, if I got saved today and tomorrow I'm going to go out and try to do what's right, this is the opposition that I'm going to face. My own family sometimes isn't going to be able to accept me. My own family is going to probably think I'm crazy. You know, certain things and certain things that I said certain ways, certain languages that I use, certain things as gifts that the Lord gave me and blessed me with, a lot of people around me didn't care. I had church people that looked at me like I was crazy and still do sometimes. But you know what? I don't care. That's just the part that the Lord's given me. This is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to warn people, and we have to learn to accept the fact that a lot of people aren't going to accept what we're saying. That We do deserve the laugh and the scorns from a lot of people. Why? Because we used to be in that lifestyle, and we shouldn't have been. A lot right here is starting to face that and realize that his family is probably going to suffer because he didn't take it heartfully what he should have been sharing. What his uncle Abraham tried to tell him not to go close to these places, not to do, he chose to do it that way, and now he's going to pay the price for it because now even though he tries his best to, to try to warn them and tell them because he sees what these angels are, it's not going to work. We're going to face that in our life. And it's something that we're going to, we're, we're going to suffer for. It's going to break our hearts. But we have to have faith in God. We have to have faith. But how are we going to know that they're not going to listen if we don't go share it with them? This is what we need to do. This is what a Christian needs to accept while they're preparing for the great tribulation. While they're preparing that today may be the rapture. If you had two messengers come to you today and say, hey, I'm going to destroy this town. The great tribulation is starting tomorrow. What would you do with it? You say, well, I would try to go warn everybody. Well, I'm going to tell you this right here is what's going to happen to you. You need to be ready. You need to be ready because a lot of people aren't going to listen to you. A lot of people, even your closest family, is going to think you're crazy. And they're going to be like, really? You were partying with us yesterday. And now you're going to tell us that we need to get out of here? So just be ready for that battle. The Lord will be faithful and help you, but be ready. Look what it says. And when the morning arose, the angels hastened Lot, saying, now here's the next day. Remember, they came at even. He went that evening as soon as he heard the news. He'd been with them all night trying to warn them. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, Lot is dragging his feet. Lot is sitting there taking his sweet time. The angels have already told him, look, we've got to get this done. We need to get you out of here. He, he went. He warned his family. They won't listen. Now he's dragging his feet. Why? Because he's hoping that, oh, well, that's what we do as Christians. We drag our feet a lot of times. Sometimes when it comes time for me to share messages, I drag my feet because I start thinking about all the reasons why I shouldn't be the one sharing this. I drag my feet. When the truth is, I should just go share the news, and if it hits me, it cuts me. If it, <coughs> if it corrects me, then praise the Lord. That's what it's supposed to be. Let's keep reading. While he lingered, the men laid hold on his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, 
the Lord were merciful unto him. You gotta understand that. Sometimes when God grabs a hold of our hand and jerks us out of our out of a situation, it's his mercy. He loves us that much that he's gonna he's gonna get us out of there in spite of us. And a lot of times I feel like that's what he's doing to me. Son, in spite of your 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 constant mistakes, in spite of your constant not doing what you, I'm gonna grab a hold of your hand and I'm gonna snatch you out of there. Because I'm trying to help you. I want you out of this place. That's what he said, the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth and set him without the city. Set him without the city. If you look that up in Hebrew, it actually means it's like they teleported him completely out. You say, well, that's far-fetched. Well, this is the Bible. This is what the Bible said. This is the truth. Okay? Took him without the city. Took him outside the city walls. Halfway up the hill. Down the road. Run him out of there. Why? Because a lot of times, let's face it, that's what we need. We need somebody to come into our lives and snatch us out of it. A lot of times, we've been in a sinful situation. We've been in this sinful lifestyle. What happens? All of a sudden, we pray, we pray, God help me, God help me. God help me, I need to quit this, I need to quit that. What all, all of a sudden, what happens? We get fired from our job. We get fired from our job, and what, what do we do? Oh, I can't believe God hates me. I can't believe God don't love me. I can't believe this. But when you stop for a second, everybody you used to party with, everybody you used to hang out with, all these people you used to have bad conversations, bad relationships, all these people that you were part of immorality with, well, where are they now? They're at that old job. So now you're going to have to find a new job. What's this new job going to be? Meeting new people. Giving you a chance to renew your life. What just happened a lot? The same thing. God's trying his best to get him out of the bad situation. I'm going to get you out of there. I'm going to put you up here. I'm going to get you out of there. Because I'm going to destroy that place. Look, I, I, I'm going to try to, as best as I can, to, to give this as an example. People that are in this type of lifestyle, idolatry, witchcraft, um, men with men, women with women relationships, uh, adultery, fornication, stealing, uh, disobedient to parents. These type of people that are they're deceivers, connivers, these type of people are going to be destroyed one day. They're going to be cast into a lake of fire. Okay. This story of Sodom right here is an example. And it tells you throughout the Bible. It's supposed to be an example to all of us of what's going to happen. A lot of Christians don't realize this. But a lot of times it even talks about in the book of Romans. About how they, they, they watch the things that these people do. Look a lot of times the, the the mindset that these people have is because they have denied God. They don't want anything to do with God. They don't see what's wrong in their lives. A lot of this time we think, oh, well, we can rehabilitate somebody. Let me tell you what a person needs. They don't need rehabilitated. They need reborn. They need born again through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is what they need. And once they get reborn, what they need done is they need gotten out of the barrel of bad apples is what they need to do. They need taken without that place that's what just happened there a lot they need taken without that place they need getting out of that situation a lot of times what we probably need to do is we need to get out of the situation that we're in because let's be honest you're constantly having the same temptations constantly having the same things come upon us in different lives what we really need is we need a start over this is what lot got right here these people and this is exactly like it's going to happen to a lot of people uh during the rapture is God's going to come down through his mercy, through his love, and he's going to snatch us out of this world because he doesn't want us to be part of this world. He, he's tried to tell that to us before, that we need to be separate. Okay, a, a lot of times the people that we're hanging out with, we wonder, well, how, how come my life doesn't get better? I'm not saying it's going to get perfect. I'm not saying you're going to become a millionaire when you get saved. But you need to get away from the things of the world. And a lot of times what you have to do is you have to get away from the people that you're hanging out with. You have to get away from the people that you think that, that are constantly being the ones that are influencing you to do the things you're doing. You need to do that now in preparation for when Jesus comes and takes us out of this world completely to be with him forever.
if you're really wanting to do that, then you're not going to miss the things of this world because you want to go. You want to, you don't want to be a part of that sinful lifestyle. You know, a lot of times you may be fight, fighting one little thing. Say, and I've been there before. Maybe you're fighting drinking and you're like, man, I just, I do okay and do I go out with certain people. Well, then quit going out with those people. It's that simple. You say, well, but I do okay until they have the party at work. Well, then quit going to the party at work. Maybe you need to change jobs. Pray and ask God, hey, open up this situation. Maybe I need to start over. A lot of times people wonder, well, about church. And look, I, I, I'm going to tell you 100%. Do you have to go to church to be a Christian? No, you don't. Do, do you have to go to Do you have to go to church to serve God? No, you don't. But let me ask you just a question, okay? And I know this sounds strange for me because I don't get to go all the time. Here it is Sunday, and I, I'm not at church. <clears throat> but but I'm gonna ask you a question. Why aren't you going? <clears throat> Ask yourself, why don't you want to go? Personally, in the job that I'm at, I witness and talk to people <coughs> all week long. My body's physically tired. My mind needs a break. I need to stop for a minute and do something like this and just share. I don't always get the opportunity to share all the time. What the Lord puts on my heart, the Lord gave me this, this is what I'm going to do. But what is it about church you don't like? Think about that. Do you not like the songs? They're all praising the God, or should be, they better be. Do you not like the testimonies of people asking and thanking God for everything that they've done for them in their life? Do you not like hearing about the good things that God does? Maybe it's the preacher. Do you not like the preacher? Do you not listen, like listening and learning about God? Maybe you need a different church. Maybe you're, maybe you're right. Maybe the preacher that, that's at the church where you used to go to, you don't feel like he's sharing the Word of God the way he's supposed to. Maybe he's not leading a life that you, that you know for a fact. Well, maybe you need to go to a different church. Maybe you need to go to somewhere different. Do you not like the people that are in there? Do the people get on your nerves? You need to ask yourself a question. If those people are Christians, and I'm a Christian, aren't I eventually going to be around those people forever? Shouldn't I get to know some of them? Let me ask you another thing. That preacher is up there. Maybe he's just like me, like I've just told you already. Maybe he is struggling through things in his life. Maybe you need to pray for him. Maybe he, there's things that he's struggling, and he can't understand why God has his in there sharing, because he's struggling through things as well. See, a lot of times we, we don't think about these things. A lot of times all we think about is, well, I just, I, I this and I that. You, we just really never know. We should want to learn more about God. We should want to get together and sing praises and, and, and do things. Why? Because when you think about it, and I'm just going to throw this out there, nobody likes to drink alone. Everybody wants somebody with them to hang out with. When you want to go into some type of active immorality, usually you want a buddy there. Usually you want somebody there to be with you. A lot of times when people do things, they hang out with people who do what they want to do. You know, it, it, take for instance, I'm a fisherman. I love going bass fishing. What am I going to do? I'm going to go to the bait shop and hang out with guys that go bass fishing. Why? Because we talk about it. That's what we do. But when it comes to things about the Bible, you may not necessarily have to have a church that you go to, but you should at least have a group of guys or a group of women that you sit around with and you talk the Bible about and you all sing songs together. And guess what? That's just as much a church as any building there is out here. That's just as sanctioned by God as anything else. Why? Because you're gathered together, two or three or more, doing what, going over the Word of God. Now here's the difference. Is that what you're actually doing? Is that what we're dedicating that time for? Or is it just an excuse? See, a lot of people, they've gotten around people that they're fine hanging out with. They're sitting at the gates with them. They're sitting on, at the bars with them. They're sitting everywhere with them. And they're thinking, yeah, I'm going to hang out. I'm going to be part of the, because I've moved up in this country. Well, if you've been at your job and that's what's maybe holding you back, maybe you need to rethink that. Your future depends on it. Lot had to leave everything. 
because he got his family into a mess. This is the mindset that we need in preparation for the great tribulation. Guys, I, I need to get my family ready. Lot wasn't getting his family ready. God came and God helped him, but Lot lost a lot of his family because he wasn't prepared. He wasn't ready. We need to get our families ready. We need to be responsible for getting and, and sharing the gospel with those around us. We need to be living a daily life and testimony so that they will believe us and we'll see that, man, this, this guy isn't joking. This really is how he feels. This is how he believes. This is what this is the truth. Our goal should be to reach as many as we possibly can for Christ because that day's coming. Anyway, this is just part of what the Lord Jesus gave me. There's one more section of verses that God gave me. That's going to be another little section here in just a minute. But I'm going to pray for you, okay? I'm going to pray for you and ask the Lord Jesus to bless you and to help you and to get you out of the situation that you're in and give you strength so that you don't have to be just Lot, but you could be the righteous preacher now that starts telling everybody because we really don't know the day. Lot had the courtesy of knowing, hey, we're going to destroy this town tomorrow. He had that courtesy. We don't. We don't know when the Lord's coming. All we know is that this life is precious and we're not guaranteed one more day. Lord Jesus, bless you all. Let's pray before we end. Father in heaven, I thank you for everything that you do. Lord Father, forgive us for our sins, forgive us for our weaknesses, forgive us for our shortcomings. Lord Father in heaven, we thank you for sending Jesus on the cross for us. We thank you for sending Jesus that he would pay the price for us so that you could see righteousness in us, Lord, because in our lives there is no righteousness without Jesus. There is no washed hearts. There is no nothing to be saved but you lord see our souls that you want to save thank you for sending jesus blood to us that we wash our souls free of sin thank you for not only that lord but for sealing us with the holy spirit that in that day that you call us all home lord that we might go with you but we ask you lord not just to stop there in our lives for all those lord who are willing please lord encourage and strengthen and give them wisdom to all those lord who want to be prepared and not just, Lord, to save themselves, but also, Lord, that may want to witness to others that they also might come to the knowledge and understanding that you, Lord Jesus, are Christ and the Lord and the only salvation that we have from this place called hell. Encourage, Lord, and give them strength. Bless your holy name, Jesus, and yours, God, Father in heaven, and thank you for the Holy Spirit that guides us every day. In Jesus' name, we ask you for all of us and them. Amen. Lord bless you all. Y'all have a wonderful day. Pray for me. I'm still learning. Just remember, though, above all things, Jesus loves you.